Pleasant lunch, Monsieur Albert? With a beautiful lady, it's always pleasant, my dear. With you? I bet. Well, I think that should about cover it, Miss Stibes. Yes, sir. Oh, refuse that invitation. You know, Chicago, addressing those economists at the convention there. So, let's see, uh, something like uh, due to a long-term engagement in Australia, that sort of thing. Of course, Adrian. And uh, telephone lady, Fitzroy. Unexpected call from Canberra. Yes, sir. Returning... Oh, the weekend in Canberra, eh? Yes, damn it. The Treasury rang me at noon. Hmm. Well, if I didn't know you better, Adrian, I'd say uh, an assignation. Un grand demande. Delbert, please. Consider that bad taste. Oh, don't be an old stick in the mud, Adrian. A woman's place is in the home, eh? Or at your dinner table. Yeah, well, Jean, I told Pexley and uh, Tom Morfitt to contact you if it's urgent. Oh, good. Uh, I'll be back at 11 o'clock Monday morning, stock exchange at noon. Well, sir, shall I send Lady Fitzroy flowers? Flowers? Your anniversary. Oh, that. Uh... Yes, I suppose so, yes. to see me? Here, put that on. Excuse me. 
Can I help you? Yes, I telephoned reservations yesterday. Oh, yes. What name? Mr. Miss, Mr. and Mrs. B. Richmond. Oh, yes, here it is. Just for the night. Yes. Oh, you don't have to pay now. I'd prefer that. Oh, all right. That'll be $11 or two. Thank you. I'll bring you over some milk in case you'd like a cup of tea. Thank you, no. Well, you don't want any milk? No. But I would like the key and the number of our room. Oh, it's come over me. I'm getting that forgetful. The key. Thank you. like something that just fell off a truck. Oh, Patricia. Oh, God, who's that? Well? Oh, excuse me, I... Uh, I uh, brought your receipt over. Thank you. It's an original. Hmm. Yes, Monsieur Daubert, from police headquarters. Very well, sir. Inspector Buchanan, would you follow me, please? Brisk walk will work wonders.
They're going for a walk. Perfect. Now we can bug the joint. Yeah. Well, let's make sure they're going to be away five minutes or more. You be long? No, just a couple of minutes. Okay, I'll go next door and check. I'm still on the floor. I'm still on the floor. I'm gonna move over to the eastern wall. I'm moving across to the eastern wall. I'm at the eastern wall. I'm going to move over to the western wall. Moving across to the western wall. Hope you're getting me loud and clear. Walking to the southern wall. I'm at the south wall now. I hope you're holding my voice at a consistent level. With the bug you've set up, we should get perfect sound. Like a dream. Good. They're just coming in. You can test again as soon as they enter. Right. Oh, I do feel better. Knew you would. Come here, you gorgeous piece of woman. Wonder it. Mm. Oh. Oh. You, you, you're the most exquisite, most beautiful girl I, I've ever known. This will be worth a fortune. Oh, Adrian. Adrian, tell me again how much you love me. More, more than anything I've ever known, will ever know. Oh, you're more than life itself to me. Mm. Once and I'll... Get it for you. Oh, my precious. Oh, my darling. My darling. To think I may have never found you. Oh. <laughs> and uh, once again, I must stress the need for absolute secrecy on this matter. It is guaranteed, Inspector Buchanan. Assured, sir. Well, uh, sorry we've kept you so late, Mr. Delvier. No, I think nothing of it. Your information is vital to our organization. Au revoir, monsieur. Good night, sir. Good night, Mr. Delvier. Good a little longer. Probably going to sleep. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, Carl, she doesn't do a bad sort of a snore. That bird you're trying to acquire.
We better sleep in shifts. Okay, you go first. I'll call you in about four hours. All right. Don't you doze off? I won't. I am acting on behalf of Lady... Lady Fitzroy. Oh, Lady Fitzroy? You're supposed to be in here, too. Oh, uh, I am. Yes. I, I mean, am I? On behalf of Lady Fitzroy, I suggest that you make a clean and honest statement concerning your... Uh, uh, Liaison. Uh, liaison, yes, I'm glad you came. A liaison with uh, Sir Adrian, uh, Lady uh, uh, Fitzroy's husband. Uh, Mr. Ma? Young lady, if you take my advice, you'll find that it'll be much, much better in the long run if you make a clean breast uh, of everything. But, Mr. Ma, please, if you... Yes, I, re I realize how worried you are, Lady Fitzroy. But will you please leave all the ancillary details to me because I've had millions and millions of experience, hundreds of cases, and I know exactly what I want to do. Now, as I said before... But Mr. Ma! Yes, uh, what is it, Lady... What's her name? Oh, Fitzroy, yes. What? My husband isn't here. He's in here. What? Well, she's got to be here. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> He's not here, indeed. Nice, huh? <laughs> here we <are. laughs> Funny place to look. <laughs> he must be here. I mean, ah, that takes me back. This has happened to me many, many times before. Yes, and it is amazing how the, how the guilty parties always find a very uh, uh, conceivable place to hide. Hide? Hey, hey. Young lady, I must ask you to stand aside. Not that. Please, not that. Miss, who have you got in the bathroom? Please, please leave. Excuse me, Mr. Mark. Yeah, what is it, Lady uh, uh, Fitzroy? Oh, don't you think we might have made a mistake? Yeah. Made a mistake? Yes. This young lady is fully clothed. But they both booked in here under the name of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Richmond, Lady Fitzroy. Who do you barrack for? Collingwood. Yeah. What's that going to do with it? Set up a beauty like this and look what happens. Yeah. Now, let's get a move on. All right. Won't be long. Now, that lady dame must have had that private D on her husband's tail for some time. Yeah, divorce rate. Wouldn't matter what we got. All right. Would have been useless. For our purposes, yeah. Now, I'm damn mad, Amelia. Damn mad. I've suspected you for some time, Adrian. Suspected? What do you mean, you stupid woman? Well, explain it to me. Explain what? Well, here you are in a sleeping bag, sleeping in the bathroom, and this beautiful young girl is fully clad sitting in the bedroom. Oh! Listen. Damn! Who the hell are you? Damn! 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 Damn. Well, that made a right mess of our plans, Trish. Never mind. There'll be another day. No, not another plan. Plan? What are you talking about? Amelia, I know we haven't been man and wife for many years. And tonight I did something about it. So, Amelia, why tonight? Well, what's special about tonight? Miss Towns and I were the chief actors in a little play. A play? Organized to trap a gang which has been operating in this town. Organized by who? Whom? Gentlemen, Sir Adrian and the others are expecting you. I'll take you to the conference room. Sir 
Adrian. Inspector Buchanan, Mr. Riverton. Uh, Dallas, Mr. Riverton, do sit down. Adrian. I'm um, <clears throat> sorry about last night, Dallas. Well, it's all spilt milk now, I'm afraid. No use crying about it. You know, I hate to say I told you so, but it was a mad idea in the first place. But we had them in the palm of the hand. Well, we've lost them now, I'm afraid. They won't try again. Well, hardly. Not now that we know their motors operandi. Hey, Inspector, when you called to see me, uh, what did you expect to happen? Well, that was just an excuse, Mr. Delvia. It was all prearranged, Jean. Why, uh, I don't get it. Well, if anything had gone wrong, if the car had broken down, if Miss Towns hadn't turned up, I wanted Dallas to stay with you until, well, as late as he could keep you. Well, he did. It was after six when he left, but uh, go on, go on. Well, if anything had happened, I was to call Dallas on your private line. Oh, I see. No, Jean, it could have been any number of things. For instance, if they'd have demanded a whole lot of negotiable securities, you know, called your bluff in some way, and uh, we decided to go along with it. Well, we figured this was the most suitable place for a central point of contact. Oh. You don't understand how these blackmailers work, of course. Well, the inspector did enlighten me a little last night, but uh, I didn't fully understand. Well, they pick the top men from the stock market, get the evidence, which is uh, particularly personal, and then threaten. And the price is your complete cooperation. We have to nominate certain low price stocks, selling between two, five cents a share, which they buy in hundreds of thousands. We have to buy them back, thus forcing the market up three, four, ten times its actual value. They must make millions. We estimate four million this year, Mr. Delvia. You see, this little operation bleeds the public, too. Yes, of course. The public see the shares rise and they buy in two. These men are forcing us to create a ready-made bull market for them. Yes, what is it? Most urgent call for Inspector Buchanan. Oh, uh, plug it through, Miss Stiden. Thank you. Buchanan. Buchanan, listen carefully. At this moment, you are with Fitzroy and Dalbert. You great whiz kids have to put your minds together. I'm giving you just two days to nominate a mining or oil share which I can buy at no more than five cents. Within two weeks, that share must rise to $10.05. Fitzroy and Dalbert have the know-how. Who know is how. this? Who's speaking? I wish to make a clear profit of one million dollars. You must think we're nuts. Well, if that's the case, you'll very soon find... You will do as I say, and do it without hesitation. If not, be looking for the body of a very beautiful girl floating around Port Phillip Bay. You were very careless with your guard on Miss Patricia Towns. You see, she is now in uh, our custody. You lay one hand on that girl and I'll personally tear you apart. I will telephone again these officers the same time in two days. Oh, and Inspector Buchanan... Please don't worry about putting a check on where the call is coming from. We'll be off the line before you can trace it. Until Tuesday, eh? Your number at this time. Call was genuine. No way of tracing it, of course. Mm. Well, gentlemen, the name of this game... More extortion. Big time blackmail. Could be murder.
As we know, four share brokers already have paid, or rather settled their shares to pay off the extortion. But how many don't we know about? You know, the thing that puzzles me is the clumsy method of the payoff. Shares. Trying to force the market. Waiting for prices to rise. Yes, but surely if shares are purchased, there must be names and addresses. I mean, the law makes it necessary to have share registers. Exactly. But the party being blackmailed has to set up the operation. That's why I call it clumsy. You see, John, in this instant, we have to buy shares in trust for an unknown party. Oh, I see. And when the market rises, we sell. And cash goes into dummy accounts, eh? Clumsy. Only word for it. Anyway, I've got a few thoughts on the matter. Well, thank you, gentlemen. If you want me, I'll be at headquarters. Stuff you want's on the back seat. Good. Hey, it's party time in the old ranch tonight, buddy boy. Gentlemen, this is a combined operation. We need all the help we can get, and we need it in a hurry. A girl is being forcibly held, and whether blackmail is paid or not. Unless we get to her first, she could easily be murdered. Now, Everingham, your fraud squad experience could be invaluable. Hardy, Thompson, I'm told that you two blokes know every con man and crooked operator in the country. Oh, Bill Taylor, come in, Bill. It's nice to have records with us. Sir? Hello, John, how are you? Now, I'm about to show you some photographs. Some of them are of blokes you know. Some of them will be of crims you've never seen. Inspector, what's the significant detail known about the man we're seeking? Well, he's got a grudge against somebody or something to do with public investment. Maybe a public company, a group of mining operators, maybe even share brokers in general. But whatever it is, he's a big time operator and he knows what he's at. Now, he's very peculiar in the manner in which he extorts money. Instead of demanding large sums from his victims, he blackmails them into issuing him shares at rock bottom prices. And then he arranges for the market to be forced up five, ten, twenty times the original price. Lucrative. And the public pay. Surely, Inspector, he can be traced. The name on the shares, the name on the cheque when they're sold. Well, I told you he knew what he was at. The share brokers that he blackmails are forced to buy the shares with their own money and then to force the market up again with their own money or with money belonging to their clients. And then the general public follows suit, of course. No, well, naturally. As soon as there's a price spiral, everybody wants to get into the act. Well, how about a man who has a hate on the investment public in general? Well, it could be. But before I show you these photographs, I just want to say one thing. We know about their form from their past records. But what I'm really after is what you fellows think that they could be capable of. And one thing in particular, I want you to let me know if you think any of them could be capable of going all the way. All the way? Murder. Baby, you don't have to be so damn fussy.
The shareholders did just the reverse to what he requested, forced him to voluntary liquidation. Well, that was his picture. Huh? Who took your notice in the first place? Dunmore, huh? Well, fellas, it's in your court. See what you can turn up, huh? On Dunmore, sir? No, he's overseas. That lead looks dead. But anybody, any person, perhaps a, a group of people, work it out. Why would anybody go to so much trouble to concoct such an elaborate fraud? Well, thank you, gentlemen. Oh, one more point, uh, sir. Minor, but it may help. The man we're looking for has got a tape recorder, or uses one. I'd say a good, expensive tape recorder. OK? OK, sir. Good night, sir. Oh, that tape recorder ploy. Yeah? Something else come in? Oh, no, no. It's just that when I was talking on the telephone, the conversations accidentally overlapped. So I deliberately let them overlap again. It just has to be a tape recorder. Tricky. Very. Come on. She insisted on coming in here. You mean she's escaped? You know, Trish, just try to keep her locked up. Well, where did she phone you from? From home. She went home, had a shower, something to eat before she'd come in. Well, surely you must have told her we'd come and see her. Look, trying to get Trish to cooperate is like trying to get a cat to swim. All right, then. We'll wait for her. Bud. Wake up! The girl! She's gone! Wake up, you drunken dope! The girl, she's gone! Gone? Yeah, she sprung me, hit me over the head with a bottle. Let's get out of here. Oh, come on, tell us. Well, after I slapped one of those little guys around for a bit, it was just a matter of time and patience. Would you recognize them again? You're putting me on. What do you mean? Locked up for almost a day with a couple of gorillas and having one of them lech and leer over me most of the time. You think I might forget their faces? I see what you mean. Have you picked them up yet? Oh, don't worry, we'll get them. When you gave us the location, we surrounded the district. Pardon me. Buchanan. Well, Sergeant Driscoll told me Miss Towns is safe. Oh, yes, she's with me now. Oh, I'm glad. They'll tell her we've been terribly concerned. She has taken a pretty severe beating. I'm sorry. But why is she in there? Yes, we're keeping under lock and key. Uh, good idea. We're sending her to a rest home in Yankalilla. Well, you are keeping it secret. I've never even heard of the place. I know. Give my warmest regards, will you? I'm, I'm really rather concerned about that girl. I'll do that, Sir Adrian. And thank you for calling. Hey, what's this about me and Yank or something? Nothing. And turn off the bashed up bit of Yes, Ted. They've brought those friends of Trisha's in here. OK, send them in. The patrol car must have picked them up. Right in here, you two. Come on. Come on, Ted. Well, it's our two kidnappers. Oh, we didn't kidnap the lady. I'd hate to be in your shoes. What's your name? Stillman. Carl Edward Stillman. Record? None. Record? Oh, well, not here. A couple of offences in South Australia. Oh, is that so? And you? What about you? My name's Bud Weezer. Where from? Merchant seaman. Jumped my ship about five years ago. Whereabouts? Port Perry. Well, you're in real trouble, aren't you? You probably get about 10 years apiece. Yeah, we knew we'd be the patsies. What's that supposed to mean? Well, we never knew who employed us. Oh, come off it. Really, miss, I'm truly sorry, but we had to do it. How much money on Plenty, Inspector. Weezer had $500 on him. Stillman had over, over 200. Hmm. Well, you were well played, patsies. I wouldn't hurt you, miss. I was just kidding. Oh, no. Well, are you going to give or not? Look, we know nothing, Inspector, nothing. Every communication we had was by recorded tape. I'll tell you about the jobs we did, if that'll help. You'll tell us that anyway. Who's the boss? Carl was telling him the truth. I never saw him or even spoke to him. The only way he got in touch with us was by recorded tape. Really, miss, I was just kidding. I'll cut out the soft soap. We're going to throw the book at you two. OK, book us, Inspector. And we'll tell you about the jobs for the rest. We're from nowhere. All right, Ted, take him out and book him. Very well, sir. Oh, and Ted. 
Let's see their statement. Mm -hmm. Come on, outside you two. They're hopeless. I know. You don't believe them. Well, I do, as a matter of fact. You know, this is beginning to form a very interesting pattern. You can. Oh, Inspector, this is Lady Fitzroy. Oh, yes, Lady Fitzroy. How nice of you to call. Just heard about that nice Miss Towns. Is she all right? Oh, a little exhausted. And her nerves are shot to pieces. I'd like her to come and stay with me for a couple of days. I believe her mother's interstate. Well, that's very kind of you, Lady Fitzroy, but we're keeping her very well hidden. Good idea. We can tell you, of course. We're sending her to a rest home in Yankalilla. Yankalilla? Oh, she'll love it up there. The snow and the mountains do the world of good. Yes, well, thanks for calling, Lady Fitzroy. Goodbye. What's this about this Yanka Villa rest home? I'm not going away. I think you should, Trish. I want to be here when you catch Mr. Big. That might be harder than you think, Trish. We've got so little to go on. Buchanan. Uh, Jean Delbert, Inspector. Coming thick and fast. Yes, Mr. Delbert. Sir Adrian told me about that brave young lady. Well, she's quite all right, Mr. Delbert. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. I believe you've caught the two men who were holding her. Yes, they're in custody. We're taking their statements now. Oh, my congratulations. I hope to meet the courageous Miss Towns one day, too. Well, you'll have to wait till she returns from her hiding place. We're sending her away till she gets over this frightening business. Oh, I, I'm so glad. Uh, but uh, she should be safe now. You've caught the real criminals. Oh, of course. She's going to have plenty of peace and quiet. We're sending her to a very tiny little place. It's called Yankalilla. Yankalilla? Well, you are playing it safe, Inspector. A tiny little beach spot in South Australia. Yes, she'll certainly be safe there. Of course she will. Well, thank you for phoning me, Mr. Delby. Well, dinner's on me. Anywhere you like. Well, that's the best news I've heard all day. Now, Kim, get Bill Taylor, Hardy and Everingham to come in and see what she can dig up on this. I'm not invited. No. I'm so sorry. Monsieur Darbert and Sir Adrian will be engaged all morning. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, Inspector, Mr. Riverton. Sir Adrian and Monsieur Dalbert are expecting you. Thank you. Ah, good morning, Dallas, Mr. Riverton. Morning. Lady Amelia, nice to see you again. How was that young lady? Did she get away all right? She's very well, thank you. But it's very kind of you to come around, Dallas. Please sit down. Thank you. No, not at all. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, we wanted to see you. Oh, you've heard from those two desperados who got in jail? <laughs> they don't even know who hired them. Amazing. Who do you suspect, Detective? My job is to do as the boss says, Lady Fitzroy. Oh, I do like to hear that today. Obedience is such a virtue. Lady Amelia, I believe you invited Miss Towns to stay with you. Oh, can she come when she returns from the snow country? Oh, she asked me to thank you personally. I believe she's writing to you. Oh, such manners from young people. Now, Adrian, you sent for us. That's right. I've discovered a disturbing thing. Oh. I believe our company has handled some of the share dealings for this unusual trickster. And kidnapper? Oh, of course, yes, kidnapper too. That's much more serious. Yes, he could get to jail for life. Anyway, as I was saying, I've had our share clerks go over every dealing in our books for the past 12 months. And what did they find? We have purchased no less than two million dollars worth of blue chip securities on cash drafts in Switzerland, in trust held by us. Who for? I have no idea. Oh. But uh, there is an account, of course, in Zurich, but that's only a number. The dispatch of cash is sent there as requested. That's yes, all we know. And do you authorize these transactions? Yes. Well, Mr. Delbert, did you know about them? Oh, of course. How could one not know of them? The amounts alone would bring them to our attention. So that, um, 
It could easily be that this is where the big boy stashed his cash. Very much afraid so. Every time he cleaned up, it went to Switzerland, and then, through us, it was invested. Adrian, tell me, who owns the shares in this firm? Well, Lady Fitzroy and I owe 70%. Jean here owes 10%, and the uh, rest, the 20%, is held in trust for the staff. Have any of you ever heard of a man called Dunmore? Raymond Trenton Dunmore. The man who threatened to get even with the Australian investing public. I think he could be the man behind these share manipulations. Australian? Yes. You're um, French, aren't you, Mr. Delia? Yes, yes. Although I've lived in Australia since I was a child. In Victoria? Yes, always. I've been around the world many times, of course. I always go around once a year, and we all do. You know, I find it uh, somewhat amazing that a man who's lived all his life in Victoria would have heard of a little place like Yankalilla in South Australia. After all, it's just an obscure little holiday spot on the coast. Absolutely unbelievable. We don't think so, Mr. Dalbert. I don't care what you believe. Just because I know a place called Yankalilla in South Australia, I'm accused of perpetrating this crime. We asked more than 50 different people where Yankalilla is, and none of them knew. Never heard of it. And yet you have. Mr. Buchanan, this might surprise you. My hobby is skin diving. Five summers ago, I went back to Yankalilla to do some skin diving. There's a very good reef there. We can check it. Yes, check. Check by all means. Do what you have to do. You know, your tactics disgust me. If this is what we can expect from the police force, we should do something about it, shouldn't we? Detective Riverton will take all the rest of the details. What further details do you want? How many birthmarks I've got? How much I've paid for my lunch? I've never heard such... Arid stupidity in all my life. But I'm, I'm sure we can confirm what Dalbell says. You're barking up the wrong tree this time, old boy. If I'm wrong, I'll apologize. Telephone. Your office. Hello, Buchanan. Why is Ted? Oh, about 20 minutes. All right, thanks. Inspector. Again, I say, Dallas, I've known John a long time. I'm sure he couldn't. Miss Dives. Mr. Buchanan. You knew Raymond Trenton Dunmore. I knew him well. Very well. That's his picture. Yes. I was his secretary, confidant, and friend. Riveter. But, but how did you know? Well, the picture we have is of about the same era. He's responsible for these frauds? No. No, Raymond went overseas. He died a few years later. But he was only a young man. A broken heart in youth does more harm than a middle-aged inspector. His injection by the public broke his heart, and he died of it. Because they didn't trust him? Only me. I was the only one. He used to say to me, Hetty, only you, my secretary. You're the only one that believes in me. Petty, if I could only make that wicked, greedy puck pay for what they've done to me. Miss Stives! Oh, you're no different, Sir Adrian. But the laugh was on me. I thought your weekend away was really what it appeared to be. And so you perfected a plan to make the public pay. I found this in a desk. You find out how did she disguise the voice? Yeah. She recorded it at a normal speed like this. You great whiz kids have got to put your minds together. And then, played it back at a slow speed, like this. You great whiz kids have to put your minds together. I'm giving you just... Turn it off, I've heard enough. All right. Why, Miss Dives? When you... when you live on your memories, when you have... No one. 
suppose it meant so much to you. It's pleasing to be able to perform a little task on their behalf. A little task? Well, it's outright unlawful. Were you aware of what you were doing and what you could be charged with? Extortion. Fraud. Possibly attempting to rig share prices. And not forgetting an accomplice to kidnapping. You seem happy about it. Why not? At least, at least I've been able to bring Mr. Dunmore's name to the fore once again. Would you get me the Royal Park Psychiatric Center, please? Thank you. Well, I reckon that probably just about wraps it up, uh, Ted. Mm-hmm. Well, come in, Ted. I just spoke to the head shrinker about Miss Stives. Huh? A very sick lady. I'd say a schizo hang-up. Mm. No charge? Oh, I don't think we'll ever be able to charge her. I think she'll been there for quite a while, eh? From what the doctor said, a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, this will be an easy one to wrap up, Dallas. Oh. Unsound mind, unable to plead. What happens to the money in Switzerland? Well, what would you do with all that money, Kim? Uh, to hell with him. I know what I'd do with it. What? Well, um, trip around the world? With the wife? How much money did you say there was? Oh, one or two million? Say a million. Then I'd have a, an imported custom-built car. For delivering the groceries, of course. What else? And a 40-foot cruiser and a luxury... No, two luxury sports cars. Oh, just the two, huh? Well, I change them every time. I, they got rain spots on the uh, paintwork. <laughs> All right, what about you? What would you do with it? Oh, well, I'm a man of simple tastes. I'd go for the three Bs. The well, three Bs? Well, I bet one of them stands for a bike, eh? Motorbike? A 754. 12.8 standing quarter, 130 top speed. Yeah, I know what the second B's for. Mm. Birds. Give the man a prize, right on. All right, what's the third one for? The third one stands for belt up. There is no way I will ever even see a million bucks, let alone get my hands on it. Oh, well, knock off time. No bird, no bike. What's the substitute? It looks like a tram and Trish. But I'll stick to Trish. Are oh, you seeing it? Yeah, ten minutes. Oh, well, you can do something for me. Give you that, will you? Hmm. It's a person for, from Sir Adrian Fitzroy and his associates. What is it? A gold watch. A timely gift. Arrivederci, Polizia, which is your international jet set talk for farewell, Fuzz. <laughs> 